Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. So today I'm sat in front of a different bookshelf because my other one is covered in stuff and I don't want to clean it. And I apologise if the lighting's weird in this video because I haven't like filmed in this room before so I don't know what it turns out like. Today I'm going to be doing a tag because I really like tags but I haven't done any in a while. This one is called the We Love Books tag and I couldn't find the original video. So if I can, I'll put a link in the description. If not, I will try my best. So this tag has 11 questions and it's called the We Love Books tag because the questions spell out We Love Books. And that's quite nice. So let's begin. Question one. What one book from a collection would you keep if all the rest had to be thrown out or taken away? Just one book. So this is like picking my all-time favourite book. The one I usually say is The Death House by Sarah Pinborough because I love the story, I love the book and also it's signed so it's got sentimental value. But thinking of it now, at the time of, of recording this video it's February 21st I believe. It's my birthday soon and I finished reading this book, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And I like, cried like a baby through the last 30 pages of this. I say I, I cry at a lot of books, but I usually just tear up. But this one I was actually crying over. So this might be like my new all-time favourite book. And I would like protect this with my life. But would another one win with like sentimental value rather than like this one wins because it made me cry and I love it so much. Question two. I'm going to forget the numbers soon, so I might as well just stop doing numbers. Each time you read, do you like to have something to munch on or drink next to you? So I always have like a bottle of water by my bed, and usually like a bowl with like some crisps or something in. But I like having it there, but I don't like eating while reading because I don't want to get like crummy fingers all over the pages. I, I have a fear of like spilling anything on my books. So. I have these things there if I want them, but I don't want them anywhere near my book. Love of books. When did it start and what was one of the first books that you read? I can't remember a time where I wasn't reading, and even if I wasn't reading I was being read to. And I think, okay, on the shelf opposite me here it has like all my childhood books on, like the ones I read in primary school, among others. And like Jacqueline Wilson takes up this entire bottom shelf. Because I loved her books and she's like shaped my childhood. But there's another book somewhere. Is it on this shelf? No. There's a book I think over there, it's called The White Giraffe and I can't remember who it's by. But that is the book I have the strongest memories of in my childhood and I'm going to reread it again soon. But The White Giraffe by someone, I can't find where it is, is probably my childhood book. One book you would never go back and reread ever. So my most recent books that I've been disappointed by reading are these two on the end. And I might like I could reread this if I was like desperate at some point, but this one like never. I wrote a review about it. It's on my blog, which is linked in the description. And I don't know when I'm uploading the video but I might have recorded the review for this at some point but I would, you know, definitely never reread it. I basically bought it because it's shiny and that is the best part about this book. That sounds so mean. I also don't like Unhooked because it's such a floppy book, like if you pick it up you can like fan yourself with it and you know, not a fan. <laughs> very romantic or very full of action. Um, action because I like, oh, I like things happening. I care about like the characters having relationships, but I don't care about romantic relationships at all because, uh, like, any genre of book becomes so dominated with romance that it takes away from the plot, and I care more about the actual plot. So I picked action picked, action picked. I'd pick action packed because I care more about action than romance, but you know, a little bit of romance if it's done right. Can you know? I, I don't mind. End of a book. 
cliffhanger or no cliffhanger? I think if it's a standalone I'd prefer no cliffhanger because I like closure on things. <coughs> but if it's a series you need a cliffhanger, that's how you keep the readers interested and want them to pick up the next book. It's why I pick up the next book, because I want to know more. So if you're having a series, don't just end, give it a good ending, you know? Then what's the point? Big books or small books? Huge books. The bigger the book, the better. Actually. I like thick books. I don't like the massive, you know, Cassandra Clare books, because they're so uncomfortable to read. But I do like having a lot of story, you know? Only one genre or a mixture. Like, definitely a mixture. Like, one genre would just be boring, I guess. Olden day books, present day or future. Victorian era type, present day dystopian. So I've read books on, like, all different timelines. A lot of the ones I loved recently have been, you know, sort of Song of Achilles. It's, like, set back in the, like, Trojan War times. Um... A lot of these are set in the past, a lot of them are dystopian futures, but I also love contemporary. I'm sorry, I can't think of any book other than The Song of Achilles at the moment, so my mind's gone blank. Katniss or Hermione? Um, I feel like that's questions put in there because they couldn't think of anything that else that started with K. But I'll confess now, I've never read the Harry Potter books because when they were like a big thing I was into like, not content, I was reading Jacqueline Wilson. So I haven't had the full experience of Book Hermione. I've seen the Harry Potter films but me and my friend, well my friend made me watch them like all over a weekend and at like three in the morning so I like have a very fuzzy memory of the Harry Potter films. But Katniss... I feel like Katniss's main aim for all the books is to protect her family, but I think from what I know of Hermione, she has more, like, a wider variety of goals. And judging on those two reasons, I think I like someone who has big dreams, basically, so I'll go for Hermione. Need to read the books, so I'll have a solid opinion, but I think Hermione. Also, she's magical. Why wouldn't you pick Hermione? Standalone or series? I think oh, it depends on the book. Like, you have a lot of YA contemporary books, they're great as a standalone because that's all the story needs. But if you're going with like, um, urban, like Sandra Clare's urban fantasy, whatever genre Rick Riordan books are, like stories that have plots that are a lot bigger that they take place over a large amount of time or they exist for multiple people. I like them to put over series because you, otherwise you're just like cramming it into one book. And I like the detail and the world building and the character development that like you can't just get in one book. So thank you for watching this video. In the comments below tell me if you prefer a standalone or a series. I'll put the creator if I can find it in the description of this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!